and the Europhile down here are the most Europhile. That means they like the idea of Europe. So this is useful. I'm just going to be an English teacher for a minute. If you see skeptic at the end of a word, that means that they're, they're not very happy with it. If you see P-H-I-L-E, file, they like it. So I can say I'm a Francophile. means I like France. Musophile, I suppose. I could make up words. I could create them. Okay. So I think that's quite interesting. If you look at where the dark green is, those are the people who most, there are, there's the largest proportion of people who, who like the idea of Europe. And you can see it's very diverse. A lot in London, as you would expect, because it's very uh, multicultural, but also, strangely, in the west of Wales, uh, that's Wales, by the way, um, which is also accompanied by the most, um, some of the most Eurosceptic. So it's not really very logical at all. Um, and because it was so close, I think it's quite interesting to look just at the pattern of people as opposed to the outcome of the result. Okay. So we've looked at Europe a bit. Oh, I want to go over there, but I can't. I have to stay here because I'm being filmed. <laughs> so we've looked at a national citizen, and we've looked at what it means to us to be a European citizen. You might think it's not useful for you, but actually a lot of you here might have more, um, identify more with the idea of a European citizen in the sense of being part of a number of states than being part of a small country like, like Britain. Where it's a very small country, a lot of people, but a very small country. <coughs> but really, what is the significance of being a citizen of a country When you look around you right now, when I can get on a plane today and be in the Middle East by lunchtime, no, just after lunch, in America by their morning, my tea time, where you can study in, if you have the money, um, in any country of the world. So what is the relevance really of any more of a citizenship that is linked to a particular country? It is impossible for us to be unconnected with the rest of the world. Impossible. Not only just thinking the rest of the world is out there, but really it would be very difficult to find somebody even if you walked on foot around the world, it would be very difficult for you to find somebody who has never had any contact, electronic or otherwise, with the rest of the world. So we are now connected in a way that we've never been connected before. Due to the internet, social media, but also just the internet. Movement of people, people uh, communities springing up everywhere else. There's the biggest community of outside Japan, for example, is on the in Vancouver, I think, isn't it? In, in Canada, is that right? I think it is. Where's the biggest Japanese community outside Japan? Outside, the biggest Japanese community outside Japan. I think it's Canada. I'm not sure, but I think it's Canada. Followed by America, the, the uh, West Coast of America. Yeah, so huge diaspora means the spread of people all over the world. So wherever you, uh, whatever you identify with, if you come from the Middle East, for example, the diaspora would be people who are from the Middle East originally, but maybe even a hundred years ago. Uh, education and work, we're all here, that's our, that's our, our job. I'm here for work, but I'm also in, I also go to um, other countries for work, and you're here for education. 
And last but not least, because it's an English course, a language. Important. We share language. And that's how we manage to communicate all these similarities, all our shared understandings. I just wanted to point out, because I'm an academic, I'm not going to go into detail, so I haven't given any names and I haven't given you any links, but I am going to point out that the idea of global citizenship, so I consider myself to be a global citizen for the reasons that I gave in the previous slide, but I needed to point out that it is controversial. Many academics and politicians think that it doesn't exist, or they feel that it shouldn't exist. Why do you think that is? They feel that it shouldn't exist because they feel that if you are a global citizen, you have, you don't need to obey the rules of your own nation. Okay. Alright, now it's time for me to stop talking and to, to show you a lovely little clip. Um, the BBC recently commissioned uh, some research. Um, and I think the report is really interesting, and that's what started, started me off on this little bit of um, talk on, on global citizenship. And they found that amongst young people particularly, uh, more people identify themselves strongly with the world, with as a global citizen, than identify themselves strongly with their own country. I see myself as a Muslim. 
interesting and there's more to our identity than just being British or Pakistani. I think about people like me, I think about an accent that can't be pinned down, an ambiguous look, or even a feeling of cultural confusion itself. I identify as being both Nigerian and British. My mother tongue is Yoruba. It's very important for me to pass on my culture to my children, and I do this by exposing them to the music, the arts, the films, and most especially the language. My fiance was born in Singapore. He's German, Korean, and American, so we have kids, so there are multiple ethnicities, nationalities, and ideas of where I'm from. I'm a Serbian, a wife and a mother. Six months ago I was diagnosed with cancer and I'm now undergoing treatment. It's a very sticky business cancer and it's become my new identity. So I'm still a Serbian, I'm still a wife and a mother, but I think my identity will change again. The link is there so you can watch this over the weekend. You're, you can also make reference look, to these. I think that's quite an interesting uh, statistic. So in the same research, I've also put the link on the, on the slides to the report, to the full report that was um, commissioned by the by BBC. So it was shown on the BBC. But it was actually the report, research was done by, an, by a, an, a, a, a specialist poll, polling organisation called Globescan. Um, and they asked a number of questions, which you can see in this report, um, to find out the degree to which people in different countries um, consider themselves to be global citizens. And I think that's really, really interesting. interested in the Chinese result of that. I don't know where they ask the questions, but you can have a look in the report. There's all the details if you want to know more. But it looks as if three quarters of the people who were asked about uh, whether they consider themselves to be a global citizen in China, three quarters said yes. Notice that the lowest degree of uh, internationalism was in Russia. So um, the answer only 25 or less than 25 percent of people who were asked in Russia consider themselves to be global citizens, which is also very interesting. Um, I've been to Russia lots of times and I've found that uh, people in Russia are really interested in the rest of the world and are really actually quite open to, to knowing more about the world. So it might be more about the question than, than the answers, to be honest. I have to say that as a... Okay, so you're free to have a look at those. Um, some of you are going to sleep and afford to tears with my, with my talking. Just next to your neighbour now, think about what it means. What does it mean if that question is, are you a global citizen? What are the questions that you might ask to find out if you are a global citizen? So just talk to your neighbour for two minutes.
Can you suggest six questions? Which would find out of your global system? concerned with what is happening in our locality. So witness means seeing and responding, opening our eyes, learning, opening our minds, understanding, trying to understand why. Um, I was teaching my level two students to say, rather than saying, it's horrible or it's wrong, or to say, it's interesting. <laughs> and now they're really good at saying, it's really interesting how English people talk. Really interesting what they do. It's opening our minds, trying to not give our opinion immediately, but trying to open our minds and trying to understand. And what you're all doing now is connecting, creating relationships, and your relationships that you create now will probably last for the rest of your lives. And geo partnering, geo geography, working together across across borders. And I quite like that. I think I'd like to finish with that, actually. I'm going to leave that on the, on the board, because I like that side very much. So I hope you've enjoyed the lecture, and I hope it's made you think a little bit, and I hope that it will lead to some discussion, and I hope it wasn't too difficult. Okay, thank you.